Just waiting for the live to come up. Live stream started. Sergeants, can you start your recordings, please? PC has started. Cloud recording has started. Backup is rolling. Sergeant Martinez. Good morning and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committee on Finance. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video for identification purposes. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so via email at the following address. Testimony at council.nyc.gov. Thank you for your cooperation. We are ready to begin. Thank you, Sergeant Martinez, and thank you to all of the um, sergeants at arms that are here to help us today to conduct this hearing. Appreciate it very much. Good morning and welcome to today's meeting of the Committee on Finance. I'm Council Member Daniel Drum, and I'm the chair of the committee. This morning, we are joined by Council Members Koslowitz, Van Bramer, Gibson, Cornegie, Rosenthal, Grodenchik, Adams, Amphrey Samuel, Ayala, Moya, Powers, Lewis, Dharma Diaz, Matteo, and Brooks Powers. Today, the committee will be voting on six items, an expense budget modification, a revenue budget modification, and four Article 11 property tax exemptions. And we'll also hold a public hearing on intro number 2291, which relates to the Madison 23rd Flatiron Chelsea bid. First, we have the budget modifications. The expense budget modification represents movements of approximately $1.5 billion of funding between and within city agencies to reallocate appropriations in the city's expense budget and has a net impact of zero dollars. The revenue budget modifications recognizes approximately $1.3 billion in new revenues in fiscal 21 with funds to be used to replenish the retiree health benefits fund in the current fiscal year. Next, we have three land use items. The first is Dora Collazo in Council Member Rivera's district. This action would provide a full 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to support uh, the preservation of 41 units of affordable rental housing. The second is Light Hall in Council Member Levine's district. The action would provide a full 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to support the preservation of 42 units of affordable rental housing. The third is 840-50 St. Mark's Avenue in Council Member Cornegie's district. The action would provide a full 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to support the preservation of five units of affordable home ownership. The fourth is 3800 Putnam in Council Member Dinowitz District. The action would provide a partial 35 year Article 11 property tax exemption to support the preservation of 44 units of affordable rental housing. Each council member is supportive of the exemptions in their district. Last, we have the public hearing on intro number 2291 which relates to the Madison 23rd Flatiron Chelsea bid, which is mostly in the Speaker's District with small portion in Council Member Powers and Rivera's districts. Today's public hearing is to hear from individuals who may be affected by the proposed changes to the bid. The bid is currently requesting that the council approve the following changes to the district plan. One, extending bid boundaries. Two, increasing the bid annual assessment from 3.25 million to $6 million, and three, changing method of ass assessment on which the district charge is based to create a formula based on use class. The changes are being requested because the current service area and the proposed expansion area have experienced substantial population and employment growth since the bid was first established in 2005. As a result, there has been increased demand for retail, hotels, and services in the area west of and within the current bid area. The southward areas of the bid also experienced increased demand as businesses in technology, the arts, media, and professional services sought office space within the bid's historic commercial buildings. 
Therefore, it is suggested that there is a greater need for bid services and to develop a more cohesive marketing strategy to support area businesses. Once we have heard today's testimony from witnesses who wish to testify about the bid, we will adjourn the hearing for at least 30 days to allow any property owner within the pro proposed area of the bid to file an objection to the extension of the bid with the city clerk. In the absence of objections filed, either by a majority of all the impacted property owners or by property owners owning a majority of the assessed value of the property within the proposed expanded bid, the committee and the full council may adopt the legislation expanding the Madison 23rd Flatiron Chelsea bid, respectively. In order to do so, the committee and the full council must be prepared to answer the following four questions in the affirmative. Were all notices of hearings for all hearings required to be held, published, and mailed as so required? Let me say it again. Were all notices of the hearings for all hearings required to be held, published, and mailed as so required? Does all the real property within the district boundaries benefit from the establishment or expansion of the district, except as otherwise provided by the law? Is all real property benefited by the district within the district? And is the establishment or expansion of the district in the best interest of the public? If the committee and full council find in the affirmative on these four questions and the number of objections required to prevent the establishment or expansion of the bids are not filed, then legislation can be adopted. Additionally, for the Madison 23rd Flatiron Chelsea bid, the committee and the full council must determine that it is in the public interest to authorize an increase in the maximum annual expenditure amount, that the relevant tax and debt limits uh, will not be exceeded, and that the notice of the increased proposed expenditure amount was properly published. Representatives, representatives from the Department of Small Business Services are here to provide testimony on the bid item, and then we also have testimony from several members of the public. SBS, uh, please um, allow my counsel to swear you in, and then you may begin your testimony. Good morning. Um, do you affirm that your testimony will be truthful to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? Can we get that on? Yeah. I, sorry, try that again. I do. Thank you. All right, you may begin. Oh, I think he needs another. There we go. All right. Good morning, Chair Drum and members of the Finance Committee. I'm Michael Blazebacker, Deputy Commissioner of Neighborhood Development at the Department of Small Business Services. I'm joined by Roxanne Early and Stephen Lee, Director and Senior Program Manager for the Business Improvement District Program. I wish to express the administration's support for the local law authorizing expansion of the Madison 23rd Flatiron Chelsea Business Improvement District, or commonly known as the Flatiron Partnership in Manhattan. At SBS, we are working hard to open doors for New Yorkers across the five boroughs focusing on creating stronger businesses, connecting New Yorkers to good jobs, and fostering thriving neighborhoods. Even through the pandemic, SBS has been a key provider of programs, services, and critical information to small businesses and commercial corridors alike. Specifically, my team is in regular communication with bids and community partners, hosting weekly open calls to coordinate response and recovery across agencies and bids, sending out updates on new city and state guidelines and regulations, and providing business resources to help those impacted by the crisis. We have also pivoted to virtual trainings for bids and our community partners on topics such as economic and legal assistance for businesses, best practices for business continuity and promotion, adjusting to remote operations, and planning ahead for recovery. We believe that these efforts are central to supporting our community partners like bids who are valuable and proven partners in fostering the vitality of the city's neighborhoods and commercial districts. In addition to our role overseeing and supporting the city's existing network of 76 bids, SBS also supervises the bid formation and expansion process, serving as an advisor and resource for communities interested in planning or expanding bids. We're careful to ensure that each steering committee we work with adheres to our planning process and policies, solicits robust community input, and performs extensive outreach to demonstrate broad-based support across all stakeholder groups. We are cognizant of the unique nature of each community we assist and empower local stakeholders to make determinations on proposed supplemental services, boundaries, budget size that best suits their community's needs, appetite, and ability to pay assessments, and the formula that distributes the assessment in an equitable manner. 
While we impart strong planning principles and share our data and best practices from across the bid network when working with any bid formation and expansion effort, we recognize that the power and effectiveness of bids rest in their unmatched understanding of local needs and issues. Like other bids expansions in recent years, the Flatiron expansion effort involved numerous meetings with local stakeholders. After extensive outreach and close coordination with key stakeholders, SBS determined that the documented support among all stakeholder groups, including over 50% of the area's total assessed value signing in favor, was sufficient to submit before the City Planning Commission. The proposed amendments to the district plan were presented before the City Planning Commission on January 20th, 2021, and were sus subsequently approved. Further, this bid expansion effort has received the written support from Speaker Corey Johnson and Council Members Carlina Rivera and Keith Powers. They've also received support from Manhattan Community Boards 4 and 5. During the initial shutdown, when many parts of the city were closed and outreach efforts for, for formations ground to a halt, the Flatiron Partnership provided crucial support to the expansion area, including providing PPE, commercial tenant legal guidance, and marketing support as businesses adjusted their business models or began to reopen. In light of COVID, SBS requested that the Flatiron Partnership conduct additional outreach above and beyond the traditional requirements. Specifically, we requested that the committee send notifications to all stakeholders in the district and provide them an opportunity to give feedback or withdraw support due to any impacts from the pandemic. Before beginning the formal legislative process, the partnership conducted additional mailings and outreach in the expansion area and was able to confirm continued majority support for this expansion in the form of new statements of support, as well as reaffirmed ballots. No stakeholders withdrew their support for this expansion. The proposed amended district plan will first extend the boundaries of the bid to provide supplemental services, including sanitation, security, marketing, public space management, and social services to an expanded area. The existing district includes properties generally bound from 21st Street to 29th Street between 3rd and 6th Avenues. The proposed expansion will extend the boundaries uh, to generally include properties south to 20th and north to 32nd. The district will nearly double in size by adding an additional 327 tax lots, going from 405 accessible tax lots to a total of 732. Second, the proposed amended district plan will change the method of assessment by creating a mixed use class. When the bid was formed in 2003, neighborhood leaders determined commercial square footage was the most equitable means of assessing properties given the concentration of commercial uses. Since the bid's formation, the neighborhood has become increasingly mixed use. In order to maintain the current level of services and to meet the growing needs of all stakeholders in Flatiron, the steering committee determined it was necessary to create a new mixed use property class to assess residential square footage of large mixed use buildings above 200,000 square feet. Buildings within this class will be assessed at the Class A commercial rate for its total retail, commercial, or professional square footage, and 40% of the Class A commercial rate for its total residential square footage. The proposed change will result in a more equitable distribution of the assessment and we believe will result in a fair assessment of district properties. Finally, the proposed amended district plan will authorize an increase in the amount to be expended annually in the district from $3,250,000 to $6 million, as the extended district boundaries will require the Flatiron Partnership to provide its supplemental services to the expanded geography. As required by law, the Flatiron Partnership mailed the summary of the City Council resolution no less than 10 days and no more than 30 days before today's hearing to the following parties to each owner of real property within the proposed district at the address shown on the latest city assessment roll to such persons as are registered with the city to receive tax bills concerning real property within the district and to tenants of each building within the proposed district. Furthermore, SBS arranged for the publication of a copy of the summary of the resolution at least once in the city record. I would like to acknowledge that the bid expansion effort is also represented here today by James Metham, Executive Director of the Flatiron Partnership and other members of the steering committee who will also be providing testimony and answering questions. Uh, at this time, happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any members who have questions? Okay, just one moment. Uh, we'll now hear from the public and I will ask council to call up the witnesses to testify. You will each have two minutes for your testimony, council. Thanks, Chair Drum. Um, when it's your turn to testify, you'll be sent an unmute request from the sergeant. So just accept that so that we'll be able to hear you. Um, we will first hear from James Metham. Buck is ready. Good morning, Chair Drum and honorable members of the City Council Finance Committee. My name is James Metham. I'm the Executive Director of the Flatiron 23rd Street Partnership. 
Thank you for considering our proposed expansion of the Madison 23rd Flatiron Chelsea Business Improvement District this morning. Since its formation in 2006, the partnership has been a dedicated steward of a dynamic business district and mixed use neighborhood around Madison Square Park in Midtown South. We do this through reliable community engagement and trust on top of our day in day out deployment of supplemental quality of life services, homeless outreach, district marketing, public space management and business support and advocacy. While the partnership has played an important role in the Flatiron area's ongoing growth and vibrancy over the past decade plus, the greater neighborhood around the bid has changed in character and uses as well. An increasing number of businesses and residents in the Nomad, Sixth Avenue and Lady Mile, Ladies Mile Historic District have regularly asked the partnership for the same level of consistent support and services that are provided inside the bid today. So in 2016, a steering committee was composed of local property owners, businesses, residents, and nonprofits. It was formed to guide the exploration of this expansion of the bid. Over the past four years, this steering committee in close coordination with SBS has openly debated boundaries and budgets and it culminated in a revised district plan that we believe can be successfully and sustainably executed across a larger district from day one. These key components again include expanding the boundaries from 20th Street up to 31st Street, going up 6th Avenue and Park Avenue South respectively. It means doubling the size of today's bid. The expansion offers bid programs consistent with those currently provided in the existing neighborhood and bid. Again, those are supplemental sanitation, public safety initiatives, homeless outreach, streetscape planning and beautification, retail promotion, advocacy, and maintenance of improvements that we install. And again, underwriting this will be uh, these services is a proposed $6 million per year assessment budget. And as mentioned by uh, Deputy Commissioner Backer, we're proposing a large mixed use building assessment class to more equitably integrate income producing owners um, that contribute to greater pedestrian density and curb, con and curb congestion. Over the course, uh, across um, a multi year. Sorry. Time out. Okay. Did you, do you want to wrap up? Sure, sure. Just to, just to say, these collective efforts have been widely embraced by the expansion stakeholders across the four years, and particularly over the past year since the pandemic started. And I, again, just want to thank the committee for their consideration and appreciate your support and looking forward to working on this. Thank you. And let me say, uh, we've also been joined by uh, Majority Leader Lori Combo. Uh, we'll now hear from Mario Messina, followed by Hirsch Narola. Clock is ready. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chair of the Room, committee members. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to uh, testimony this morning. Uh, I'm Mario Messina, one of the founders and partners of the 29th Street Neighborhood Association. I represent over 400 members, primarily residents and some small business owners. I can simply say that we are all excited about the prospect of the bid expansion. As a matter of fact, we have been asking for it for the past seven or eight years. We are welcoming with enthusiasm this expansion because we know, uh, since we are witnessing, especially in this difficult moment, how important are the services provided by the bid in promoting a better quality of life. You can see the difference between the area serviced by the bid and the areas that are not. The area serviced by the bid is clean, greener, free of graffiti, and it is safer without panhandlers and drug dealers. They also have an excellent outreach program for homeless. All services this that are very much needed during these difficult times to foster the growth of our area. In a few circumstances, we had the opportunity to witness the bit play in balancing needs of the business and residential communities in this evolving mixed use neighborhood. We're looking forward to this expansion to the benefit and improved quality of life very much needed in our neighborhood. Thank you very much for the opportunity to testify this morning. If there are any questions. Thank you so much. I uh, will now hear from Hirsch Narola, followed by Michael B. Root. Clock is ready. Hey, good morning, Chair Drew and fellow commissioners. Uh, my name is Hirsch Narola. My wife and I own and operate Bombay Sandwich Company, a, a vegan and vegetarian fast casual restaurant located at 48 West 27th Street. 
in the proposed expansion area of the Flatiron bid. I appreciate the opportunity to provide my support for the proposal today. We started our business in 2012 at Brooklyn's Marksburg, and then in 2014, opened our first brick and mortar location in the Nomad neighborhood. We chose this location to, due to its proximity to the busy Sixth Avenue corridor, as well as the large number of office workers and nearby transportation hubs. 48 West 27th Street lays just outside the area currently serviced by the Flatiron bid between Broadway and Sixth Avenue. The blocks near us receive additional cleaning and maintenance and other services, including gra graffiti removal, planted tree pits and flower baskets and colorful banners sponsored by the local businesses. Our block and the particularly Sixth Avenue would be transformed with the bids services and I firmly believe we would benefit from increased foot traffic. We also chose this location for the cafe as it directly abuts a privately owned public space, Pops. The Pops is currently being renovated and we're aware that the Flatiron bid successfully maintains and manages the Flatiron public plazas. There may be future opportunities to collaborate with the bid and property owner to activate the space for positive community use if the bid expansion is granted. We believe that the proposed assessment is but a small price to pay for the services that will be provided by the Flatiron bid, and not only for our block of West 27th Street, but also the 6th Avenue and the entire expansion area. The bid will be instrumental in helping cultivate safe, inviting surroundings to welcome much needed foot traffic to the neighborhood that will keep us and other ground floor shops open for business post COVID. I'm inspired. All right, I just, I guess um, that almost wraps up my testimony. Thank you again uh, this morning uh, for providing the opportunity to support the proposed Rhode Island Bridge. Thank you for your testimony. Um, we'll now hear from Michael Beirut, followed by Jordan Barowitz. Uh, my, name is Michael Beirut. my name is Michael Beirut. I'm an owner of the New York City design firm Pentagram. Our first office 40 years ago was on the 17th floor of 212 Fifth Avenue, the corner 26th Street. We began in 1980 with just a dozen people. At the end of the decade, we had tripled in size. We were looking for a new home. We found it a few doors down the same block, four-story former bank turned nightclub at 204 Fifth. The neighborhood back then, as you will remember, was not great. It was dirty. It was dangerous, dark after business hours, abandoned on weekends. It was risky to take a shortcut across Madison Square Park. Yet we thrived there and our neighborhood would too, thanks to a new organization called the Flatiron 23rd Street Partnership. As business owners and eventually landlords, we joined this coalition early and enthusiastically, and the partnerships saw results from the start, cleaner sidewalks, safer streets, increasingly diverse and vibrant retail. What was once a nameless area became increasingly a destination with a beautiful park at its center. We tripled in size again. Our building could no longer hold us. Reluctantly, with great internal debate, we decided to move, looked all over the city, ended up signing a lease for a beautiful space on the top two floors of 250 Park Avenue South, just south of 20th Street. It is barely outside the borders of the Flatter and 23rd Street Partnership, even though we get the benefits of the partnerships work just by stepping outside our door and crossing the street. Now we've got an opportunity to extend the boundaries of the district to include our address and many of the wonderful homes, businesses, stores, and restaurants that surround this amazing area. Coming out of a once in a lifetime pandemic, we're at a delicate moment in the life of this city. Moving ahead will take energy, imagination, and grit from all of us. Fortunately, those attributes are in great supply at the Flatiron 23rd Street Partnership. The momentum's on our side for our neighborhood, for our community, for the city. I strongly support the expansion of this district. We need it more than ever. Thank you, Chair Drum. Thank you, Council members. And uh, thank you for giving me this time to testify on behalf of my favorite bid. Thank you. Uh, we'll now hear from Jordan Barowitz. Clock is ready. Good morning, Council members. <clears throat> my name is Jordan Barowitz. I'm the Vice President of Public Affairs at the Durst Organization. I testify today in support of the ULEP application to expand, to expand the Flatiron 23rd Street bid. The Durst Organization owns 855 Avenue of the Americas at 31st Street, which is within the boundaries of the expanded bid. 855 is a true mixed use building. It composes 55,000 square feet of retail, 120,000 square feet of office space, and 375 units of rental housing, 
of which 25% are income restricted and reserved for people earning a fraction of New York's AMI. 855 is part of the large mixed use assessment class and will pay an assessment on its commercial and residential square footage. We believe mixed use buildings benefit from services for the bid and support contributing to the much needed supplemental services of the bid along 6th Avenue via the bid assessment. We have heard concerns that assessments on residential space will translate into increases in rent. Bid assessments will be absorbed by the building owner, not the tenants. This will happen for two reasons. All units, even the market rate units built under the 421A program are rent stabilized and all rent stabilized increase are governed by the rent guidelines board. Even if a unit is not rent stabilized, rents are determined by the demand for the apartment, not expenses. Case in point, Manhattan rents are down nearly 20% year over year, despite an increase in taxes, insurance, and other operating expenses. Additionally, the proposed bid expansion area is at the nexus of Nomad, Midtown South, and Flatiron. It is heavily trafficked and a dense mixed use district with large office, residential, and retail corridors that attract many visitors, including a considerable population of non-domiciled individuals. The proposed expansion area strains under the burden of the need for increased sanitation, public. homeless outreach, and advocacy. The expanded bid will improve the streetscape, make residents and visitors safer, and increase the services for those suffering from addiction and mental health challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chair Drum, that is all the public testimony that we have for today. Uh, you're on mute, Chair. Thank you very much. And thank you all for coming in today to give testimony. Um, I will now ask uh, Matt DiStefano, our committee clerk, to call the vote not on this issue, but on the land use items and the budget modifications. Good morning. Matthew DiStefano, committee clerk. Committee on Finance, roll call a vote. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Van Bramer. Council member Van Bramer. I vote aye. Gibson. Council member Gibson. Sorry, I was muted. I vote aye. Thank you. Cornegy. I vote aye. Combo. I vote aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye. Thank you. Rodenschik. Aye. Adams. I vote aye. Ampri Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. Aye. Moya. I vote aye. Powers. I vote aye. Lewis. I vote aye. Dharma Diaz. I vote aye. Brooks Powers. I vote aye. Matteo. Aye. By a vote of 17 in affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all the items have been adopted. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, with that, this meeting is adjourned at uh, nine, uh, excuse me, eight. Is it Eight there, and um, excuse me, nine at nine thirty seven in the morning. <laughs>